All right, so we're back again. Um, when I left off last time, I had just made some patterns on this, on the Octatrack, using um, Guns N' Roses' Welcome to the Jungle. Um, and if you watch that video, you'll know what that all sounded like. But we'll go into that in a minute. Um, today, we're going to be looking at making a beat for it using the Digitact. Um, well, beats and sound design and whatever else we can muster, really. And we might use the System 1M um, for some bass, probably. I would say this tends to be what I use the System 1M for it quite a lot, is just bass lines, because I feel like it's really good at them. Um, <clears throat> so... <clears throat> <laughs> So there's a lot going on here. Obviously, it's a bit busy. Um, we're gonna work with that. We're gonna, well, when I, especially when I record it into the computer, um, I'm definitely gonna make sure <laughs> that I tread carefully with how I arrange the track. Um, so let's make a beat. Let's, uh, let's go over to the Digitact and do some stuff. So it's completely blank pattern over here. Um, no samples are loaded. <coughs> um, so let's just let's just make a beat. Um, I guess I usually start with a kick drum. It tends to be what I do. Um, I'm gonna mute that other bit so we've just got this main sort of riff playing. Um, yeah. Let's go over to the analog heat as well and just turn up some of the drive so we get a bit more, bit more signal. Um, so this very first sample on the Digitac, the bass drum, is definitely one of my favorite sounds. I use it all the time. It's very versatile. You can sort of mess around with it and get a lot of different results, but I just think it's a really nice sounding kick drum. It's got a nice sort of boomy tail to it and a, and a bit of a punchy um, <clears throat> transient. Um, so, God, making beats, like, you don't want to fall into old habits, you know, but at the same time, there's not that much you can do with beats. <laughs> That's not true, there's heaps you can do, but, you know, like, you, it's, it, falling into old habits is easy because, um, I suppose, you know, I have a style and I just kind of, uh, you know, you just fall into habits. Um, so one thing I'm going to do, just real quick... So I'm going to make a scene over here on number 16, um, and my track 8 is set as a master. And I'm just going to turn some of the filtering down so it's not quite as harsh, so we can hear uh, more of the beat. Like, that's just for my benefit while I'm making this beat, so it's not so in my face, or in your face, uh, for that matter while uh, we're building it. So let's just put in some trigs. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's just, uh, you know, see what happens. All right, I'm gonna stop that and focus more on this. One thing I like to do is to just mess around with tuning. Uh, using the Digitact in conjunction with the analog heat, by the way, is it's almost like the two are joined now and like they can never be split up. Um, just because oh, it's just so satisfying to just be able to instantly boost 
a, a beat, you know, just instantly make a kick drum sound fucking massive um, and instantly distort stuff. Um, obviously, that's not always what you want, and I, you know, try to limit w what I do with that. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, it's just, a, I mean, obviously, they're the same size. They fit right next to each other. They're, they're like, made to be together. Um, that's the way I sort of see it. And that it's, it's, even though I feel like maybe I don't use my analog heat as much as I should, um, it's difficult for me to imagine giving it up, especially given how well it pairs with the Digitact. Um, but let's, let's make a new track here. Let's go down to the sources and let's... I do love that snare drum. It's very hip hop. Um, which, you know, especially at the moment I'm way into. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna try some stuff and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm, just, I'm not even gonna listen to it. I'm just gonna sort of go with it, go with the flow. Um, hey, what do you know? Sounds all right. Um, I feel like maybe a bit of swing could probably help us here. Um, that works like it definitely adds something to it but god swing is so divisive for me like i find that it always makes everything sound like a fucking casio drum machine attached to a fucking shit keyboard from 1983 or something um you know not necessarily a bad thing but um you know like it's, it's got a bossa nova vibe to it you know what i mean um hey lots of lots of bands have made that work so you know whatever um so let's let's just keep going. Let's uh, let's see what else we can do. Let's uh, maybe add some hi hats or something. I find that the Digitex very it's just very immediate. You can get a lot of. It's just I don't know. It's really fun to make kind of simple beats, but and it's really quick. Like it's just it's so fast to get usable, good quality sounds. <laughs> the time being maybe i'll bring the swing back in but i gotta turn it off while the hi-hat's happening it makes me it just fucks me up getting somewhere i'm not really sure if it's the right destination but we're going somewhere so let's just keep following that uh, i want something melodic though so i'm going to go down to the bottom part of the list we've got a bunch of stuff in here some of it's my stuff some of it's other stuff so um 
Let's see. something else. Oh shit. Alright, that's not what I wanted. Alright, so this is one of the samples that I've recorded in, but I, I don't like all of it, I just like that initial hit there. So I'm gonna select this sample. I'm gonna go to here. And in fact, I'm going to change the length of it. And I'm going to add lots of reverb. So the interesting thing that's happening here is that <clears throat> the beat works for the first 16 steps and then it starts to deteriorate a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the scale to be 64 bars, just like over here. Um, and I'm going to edit, especially the kick drum, because that's where it's really messing around. Um, and I'm going to edit on the second page, I'm going to remove some of this stuff, make it a little bit less busy. Um, change some things around um, and kind of just experiment with it. Um, let's try that.
Um, I like that. That sounds cool. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to mute all of these. Um, and I'm going to go back to the Octatrack. And this time I'm going to make a baseline with the Roland System 1M. And the reason I'm going to do that is because once I've got a baseline, uh, which I'm going to work from the original uh, Welcome to the Jungle samples, then I've got melodic content that I can work into the beat and the melodic stuff over here. So right now they're, they're kind of working together, but in a kind of unusual way maybe. And I want the bass line to sort of really glue it all together. So I'm going to try and, I'm gonna try and do that. <clears throat> um, so what I need to do is go to a MIDI track and uh, I'm just going to set it to channel one because it's what I always use um, and this is what this is set up to do I'll put it on chromatic and now you can hear that <clears throat> but what we're going to do is god this thing sounds good even that I just want to start a track based on that maybe I can <laughs> No, I cannot. move this trig uh, to micro timing. I'm going to move it over like halfway between these two. Um, no, maybe a bit further, see what that sounds like. Keep going. Ah, fuck it. It's just going to have to be over there. Um, bring it right back.
Yeah, one thing about the System 1M that I really wish you could do is control the pitch, uh, control the LFO, sorry, control oscillator 2 or 1 with the L pitch LFO separately from each other. Um, I'd really like to be able to do this kind of effect. Oh, also, while I'm talking about it, I, I realize that the System 1M is not in the shot. Sorry. <laughs> not much I can do about it, considering the layout of all of this. Uh, and I kind of want these screens to be as visible as possible. So anyway, you don't need to see it. You know what I'm doing. Um, so I can't do what I just described that I wanted to do. I could get a similar result, maybe doing uh, arpeggios on the Octatrack, which I guess we could try right now. So, arpeggio sounds cool, but it's not going to work for this. Alright, so what I'm going to do is on the octatrack, I'm going to change the notes so that I can change the pitch on this because at the moment the pitches on the System 1M on both of the oscillators are set to the lowest um, they can go and I want, I want to be able to have slightly more variation with the pitch. So I'm going to, how am I going to do this, uh, I'm going to change it from F sharp 3 to F sharp 2. Same with this one, not that one, this one to F2. This one to E2. And this one to G sharp 2. There we go. I wonder what it would sound like though if I use the LFO um, on the amp. So, what does it sound like with the beat? Right, I've got to unmute these. sounds fucking dope actually. Um, the only thing I'm going to do 
is with this quite melodic one, I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna use some conditional trigs, I think, to make certain trigs not hit as often. And what does it sound like with the original sample? So I think it's sounding pretty interesting. Um, I do feel like the timing is ever so slightly off, which is not necessarily the worst thing. Um, and it's definitely something I could spend some time with and adjust. Uh, I don't know if that's like the sort of thing I want to do on this video because it might be quite boring to watch. Um, and also I'm not really sure exactly where I would make adjustments at this point. Like it might be a case of like the beginning of the sample. Um, the, but you got to keep in mind as well, I've got slices here. So like, um, it becomes a whole thing, you know? <laughs> uh, so I might not, but you can sort of see actually where the beginning of the transient starts in the slices changes as we go along. Um, which makes me, I feel like that suggests that it's slightly off. Um, but you know, when you're dealing with samples and remixing, not everything can be perfect. And sometimes these sort of imperfections actually kind of make something sound interesting. Um, let's, let's see how the swing goes again this time. I think the swing is making it sound better now, which uh, just goes to show that I shouldn't, I should try swing more often. But this, the Octatrack is not uh, swinging right now. So, um, what we should maybe try is bringing some swing to the Octatrack and see what we get. Um, <clears throat> maybe 55, which is what the. Digitac display. I'll bring it back down to 50 and we'll bring it in as it plays. So what I've noticed as well is that there are certain breaks in the rhythm of the sample um, which I've created with parameter locks and stuff which mean that the beat, especially the hi-hats, should stop at that same time. At least to my ears that's what should happen. So let's have a listen and I'll point them out. These last three ones, I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna hold them down and copy three trigs, um, and I'm just gonna delete them and let's see what that sounds like. See, that already sounds better, but we've also got other things going on here like a snare. So let's get rid of these snares and let's go to the kick drum. And we've also got a kick drum, so let's get rid of that as well. 
see what I mean? You see how it sort of just gives this sample space. Um, so what we're going to do is on the uh, on the kick drum track, we've got no downbeat on this uh, the next 16 bars. So I'm just going to add one in there because I feel like it's going to give it some power, which I think it needs. <laughs> In fact, I might make it two, and I might pitch them up a bit, both of them. Um, and I might move this one with micro timing over here and see what that sounds like. No, that doesn't really work. Um, let's bring it back. And I think that that's good, but like like I said, there are more parts uh, in the sample where things need to stop on the beat for make it to add some room, so let's do that. <laughs> There's still some parts where it seems slightly off, so I might use micro timing on the ultra track to bring some of these uh, slices into into line. Um, it's definitely a fiddly process, and this is where things can get really um, nitpicky, not nitpicky, uh, tedious, you might say, with the ultra track. But I don't think it's like an unpleasant experience. Um, I think that you know, getting really nitty gritty with some of these. Um, some of these, you know, uh, granular kind of refinements um, is actually where it really shines. You can get really detailed. Um, so I think it's, uh, this one is one of them. So I'm going to just experiment with this, bring in that like maybe there. I actually think it needs to be further across. Sounds, sounds better already. I think that this one could be moved over just a slight bit. And I actually think that these ones can be moved to maybe to there, maybe to there as well. And this one maybe actually goes the other way. Um, could maybe go further, but I also, uh, what I want to do, oh shit, oh my fucking Christ, uh, <laughs> I hate the octa track sometimes, <laughs> fucking hell, what, what, uh, slice, so we are up to slice 11, alright, good, I don't know what 
stuff I had on that slice, but I guess we're going to redo it because uh, I lost it just by clicking on it. I love it. I'm gonna make this short. 700, give it a bit of a tail, not much though. Copy it. feel like that's approaching something that I like um, and I feel like it's time to end the video so that might be it um, but let's we haven't even listened to the other sample yet so I'm just gonna mute this one and see what this other one sounds like with it because it might just be disastrous oh yeah it's totally disastrous uh, I feel like that sample is gonna have to be some kind of breakdown or something or maybe a transition into another part of the track um, <clears throat> But, you know, suffice to say, uh, remixing tracks is a, a process and I find that I end up in situations where I kind of just let things evolve kind of naturally, like how it feels like they should, um, based on kind of what the sample is wanting almost, like what it's telling me to do. Um, <clears throat> and it, you know, sometimes it takes time uh, to find the sweet spot. Like I, made, I did a, a remix of... Um, Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Um, that's basically the only track of theirs I know, but <laughs> I do like it though. It's a good track. Um, and I hated it. I hated the remix that I made um, at first. I just felt like it was all over the place. It didn't really work. Uh, the The timing of it was really weird, but I finished it. I finished the remix and I just left it. I thought, well, fuck that one. That's I'll have to do that one again. Um, and I listened to it a few weeks later and I thought it was awesome. I thought it was one of the best remixes I've ever done. <laughs> so, you know, don't um, don't always believe your 
instincts on that sort of stuff. Give tracks some time to settle in your mind before you revisit them. That would be my advice. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. <clears throat> I might do a third part as well, depending on how I feel about where the track is going. Um, yeah, like and subscribe. Like my videos, subscribe to my channel, um, that kind of thing. Tell me what you think. I always want to know what people think. Um, and I'll see you later. Bye.